Make your own contrast paint and save some hobby dollars. <laughs> Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and I've got a great tutorial for you today on contrast paints. So contrast came out about four or five months ago in the summer of 2019, and everybody seemed to have something to say about them. But overall, I think they are a great tool to use in your hobby toolbox to have on hand. There's about six colors that I really, really recommend, and I'll, uh, I'll link the article to the SpikyBits.com. A site that kind of have our ideas on the ones that immediately sold out that everybody seems to use, which are super helpful. But for the rest of the line, I think there's 30 some paints. You know, if you're going to pick those up, you're talking a lot of cheddar. But there's a way to actually mix up your own contrast paints on the relatively cheap. You know, it's for about the cost of four or five contrast paints, give or take, and have that ability to make whatever contrast paint you want and also glazes and combo them with washes and some different effects out there to kind of use them in your everyday hobby kind of paint life that like I've been doing here. And I think it's great and I'm gonna show you some of the effects that I've been able to do and I'm gonna also kind of show you um, the application and how they kind of go on and some, some of the different effects you can do from paint itself to glazing to different things and just how easy it really is to just kind of save some hobby dollars and make your own contrast paint. So contrast paints came out with a bang this summer and here you can see uh, I've already rebottled some of them into dropper bottles and some I haven't gotten around to, but uh, this bottle basically is going to cost you $8. Now it doesn't exactly fit in this bottle right here. The, I, I need a 20 mil, so I didn't uh, rebottle all of them yet. I got to rebuy uh, some bigger sizes, but regardless, if you're trying to just kind of make your own mixture of the medium to add to either washes or paint, it's actually very, very easy to do and very, very close to the GW recipe. Although I don't know what the GW recipe is, but I got a couple of clues because looking at uh, some of their paints that had settled, I was like, man, that's just, that just really looks like matte medium in there, some sort of medium. And I just kind of went from there. So what I did was I took a bottle of their contrast medium and I just mixed up two sample bottles. And all this is, is just 50, 50 flow improver and either matte medium or um, glazing medium. And then I just kind of figured out which one seemed to work the best. And that's really all I did. And to be quite honest, it was very easy to do. I had um, some wash medium, some both some glazing medium and some mixing medium on hand from Army Painter. And so if you already have some of these laying around because you already use them for glazing, then great. You don't have to buy anything else for the most part because you already probably have some flow improver from airbrushing. But if you need to pick up either of those things, Airbrush Flow Improver comes in a super big bottle and we'll put a link into it uh, so you can scoop some up at your local store. They got them at Hobby Town, they got them at Hobby Lobby. They also have them um, online at Amazon. And you can pick up a big bottle of matte medium. Uh, Liquitex is probably the best depending on who you ask. And you can get a large bottle, as you can see right here from Hobby Lobby for you know pretty decent price and also online on Amazon. So. All you got to do is just mix those together in a bottle 50 50 and you have your contrast air quotes medium uh, mixture. That's it. Uh, tutorial over. Now, I want to show you exactly what it does because there's some strengths and there's some weaknesses to it as well. And I kind of want to go over those. So let's um, let's kind of check it out here. Now, if you saw our contrast tutorial from when it first came out, we painted this guy right here and I really liked it. I think contrast is great, but the problem I had with it was the time between drying. So if you're not doing a batch painting, you're going to have a lot of uh, waiting time for drying. And also you need to do a super bright base coat. So you're going to kind of need this, um, what is it? Wraith bone, I think is what I used on this guy right here. But other than that, in any, you know, any places you mess up, like you get green on it, you're going to have to go back with that wraith bone, fix it, and then do yellow back over it, which is going to also slow you down. But the effects are great because you can see right there where it really spread out and kind of filled in exactly where it should. And it's very vibrant. It's very poppy. Now it's possible to get that same kind of effect using that mixture. I just showed you right here. Um, I actually used the matte medium. I think is, is probably better. And I painted this guy up, but uh, as you can see it, the effect is pretty much the same 
The sword looks very similar effect wise. The skin looks also very, very similar. The uh, hair also very similar. It doesn't have quite that, that darker contrast in there. I used a lighter red. Uh, I think I used more of a, uh, a, a poppier red instead of that dark flesh terrors red that I used on this guy's uh, little buds right there. And you can see his legs and arms and everything are, are very, very similar. Uh, the wood color is very, very similar, which kind of all makes sense because that was just using washes. Um, so from there, you can kind of draw two conclusions. The first conclusion is that GW's contrast paints are very, very poppy and very, very highly pigmented. So if you want this specific look, well then, you know, you may need this Talzar blue because it's it's very it's very bright, it's very poppy. Unless you can find a wash or a uh, acrylic paint, an opaque paint that is this this bright, this this poppy. So if you can do that and you have that in your your hobby arsenal, then great. You you can just mix in some of this medium. But for some people, they're not going to have something this poppy because I mean to be quite honest, I didn't. As you can see right here, this was about the brightest blue I had, and it it definitely does not do the trick. But look at the green. The green was very similar. So you can do some very similar effects with a little bit of foresight and obviously everybody's uh, paint arsenal is gonna be a little bit different. So just to kind of give you an idea of that, we're gonna do a little demonstration here. I painted up, um, I used some of that wraith bone and I put it in these plasma coils right here. And we're gonna do one side with uh, the brightest green I have. And then we're gonna do the other side with um, the warp uh, lightning glow right here that is very very popular and another super super poppy very bright contrast color so let's see what it ends up looking like so I poured out some green paint here we got the warp we got the warp glow over here we've got uh, p3 super bright necrotite green right here army painter green tone which is kind of an in-between wash and then this is the way watcher glaze uh, from GW so you can kind of see where there you can see through some of them But this is a little bit thicker. So it definitely has some sort of medium in there Whereas the army painter green tone is a little bit thicker as well. So it's got some sort of um, It isn't just like a straight wash is is probably evident in this uh, kind of test right here So I'm just gonna grab some of our mixture right here, which is our version of contrast medium just a 50 50 flow improver and um, matte medium and we're just gonna throw a little bit on here next to each one and kind of pull it just to kind of show you. And I'm using these uh, these new Game Envy brushes here. This is the Lance, um, the number two. I've abused the crap out of this brush. I don't know how this brush still likes me. I don't really know, but um, it keeps going and I love it. <laughs> I condition it after every use. And uh, I'm very surprised that it puts up with all the abuse I've, I've, I've given this thing right here. So it looks like this green is is very very poppy as well but it's getting very similar once you once you thin it out to that the army painter one is going to be a little bit darker and the way watcher glaze is probably the brightest out of all of them to be honest and that's uh that's already thinned down so we're just gonna mess around with this maybe i'll do maybe i'll split it in fours and kind of show you we'll go uh, we'll go left to right but I mean, for the most part, this stuff should just apply pretty easily onto here. But the problem is that you got to be uh, very, very tight when you're doing this because um, it can get kind of messy on you. And then mistakes are, are costly because it's wet and it takes a while to dry. So it hasn't quite dried yet, but we're going to be able to kind of tell the results here. I'm going to slide this out of the way. And uh, for the contrast system over Wraith sear very very um you know pastel -y kind of color the contrast paint probably worked the best and there you can see it right there with the necrotite from p3 probably being the second brightest and then on the back the army painter uh looks like it kind of drooped down a little bit and then at the very bottom is the gw way watcher so for this type of method the contrast paint itself works great but that's if you're going over a very, very pastel color and working it up from there. But there's there's more to contrast than that just that. It makes great glazes and it can really, really add um, some super easy effects just like straight over metal, straight over bone and all sorts of things uh, to your models as well. If you're making a glaze out of the contrast paints with things like the Army Painter um, Dark or soft tone, which is, you know, basically agrax. So if you're taking strong tone, 
that is, uh, you know, basically Agrax Earthshade works great over bone. Here you can see on my ogre miniatures, I just used a little of that mixed 50 50 with uh, the contrast medium we just made. And you can see where it really shaded in everything here on all this bone detail all around the stone horn right here. And it works super great on the skulls. All that is is a base coat of uh, some sort of bone color. I forget, I think Minoth White. And then one application of strong tone mixed 50 50 with uh, that medium right there. So for gl glazing, it's amazing. And I even did it with metal. I mixed up 50 50 of strong tone and dark tone and put it over top of metal right there. And you can see the amazing definition, the smooth kind of fade and transition on the metal itself. Ignore the blood splatter. There's no, there's nothing to see here, but it just worked really, really good and laid down so well um, and so fresh. I even used it with a little bit of a dark gray color and glazed all of the fur right here. And you can see where it really gave it some depth and some definition um, to go along with this. Now, normally I used my paint water from my, um, for my uh, my airbrush, but I mixed in a little bit of dark tone and gave it a nice, nice thin glaze. And you can see where it really, really kind of shined through and popped things. But it isn't just models like that that, that works great on. Little stuff like metal and uh, futuristic miniatures too. Like here's my Death Corps horses that I've been painting forever. I finally got around to washing them or glazing them. And I did the same thing. I added a little bit of dark tone. Now you could use Nolan Oil from GW. You don't have to use the Army Painter stuff. It's all pretty much the same. And then you just add 50-50 contrast medium to it and the, the jackets are automatically shaded. That's just a, a uniform gray. Literally looks like this. It's just a light gray with dark tone or Nolan Oil 50-50 with that contrast medium that I just showed you and that, that we made that's super easy to make. And then it just shades. It auto shades everything. Look at the look at the wiring right there on the Death Corpsman. You can see all the metals. We used that same mix we used on the Ogors. And it really, really pulled it through. It really, really popped. It got into the recesses and anywhere there needed to be like a brown or something, like around uh, the saddle and the little blanket that they put over the horse itself. It really worked out. And then look at the look at the metal on the explosive tip right there. It perfectly shaded the metal in one application straight over something very, very bright like that. So I really like this method and you can mix this up instead of spending, you know, like I said, instead of spending eight bucks for this contrast medium bottle, you can literally, if you already have some of the Army Painter quick shade wash mixing medium, actually I would probably use the, the normal medium and a little bit of flow improver. So if you're already been following along with some of the stuff we do here, talking about the airbrush flow improver, or even over on uh, Next Level Painting on Kenny's channel, you probably already have these in your hobby arsenal. Just mix them up 50-50 and use them with your washes. Or you can just use them with this, or you can use them with this. But I'm telling you right now, I mean, the proof is in a pudding. The pull and the layering and the lay down and the non-staining ability of all these paints here, or this medium, is pretty, pretty remarkable on um, all sorts of different textures, from fur, to bone, to metal, uh, to skin, to even pants. I think I washed pretty much everything on this. It's, it's a no-brainer for skulls. Um, it's like a one-step process. It is just amazing. It's super cost-effective, and I think it's really worth checking out to kind of make your own glazes. And then, of course, you can, like we did here, use it and mix it with all sorts of different color, even even opaque colors like I did here with this red, um, to kind of break it down in a pinch to get that kind of mix you need instead of paying, paying eight bucks for, you know, a, some sort of contrast paint or something like that. But some of the colors, as we showed you, are very, very good still in contrast. Like this blue is amazing in contrast. You know, this green is still very, very good in contrast. It's probably one of the paints you want to have in your hobby arsenal. So other than that, there's some definite cost effectiveness, uh, you know, so you don't have to keep blowing eight bucks every time you go to the game store on a new pot of paint or a new pot of uh, contrast medium. You can mix up your own and definitely save some hobby dollars. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed and learned something from this uh, little product tutorial on uh, how to make your own contrast medium and contrast paints. But again, they're good at some things and not good at others. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.